Now, when thinking about the encephalization associated with the origin of the genus Homo, it's important to think about the relationship between brain size and diet. There's an interconnection between the two. Obviously, you need a high-quality diet to support large brain growth. But the reverse holds true as well. A larger brain also reflects the brain becoming an adaptation potentially towards better quality diets. To be able to access the kind of food resources necessary to support a high quality diet, the large human brain or the encephalized brain becomes an important tool of that overall repertoire. It essentially becomes part of our diet. Indeed, as we move throughout the Pleistocene, the two major changes we'll see in the fossil evidence for the genus Homo are larger brains and smaller chewing teeth. In some ways, the brain begins to replace the teeth. And thinking about it in the context of the origin of the genus Homo, we need to think about then which comes first and how the two are interrelated. Does an initially encephalized brain lead to a higher quality diet? Or does a higher quality diet allow for an encephalized brain? In thinking about this model, it allows us to generate predictions again as to what we might expect to find in the fossil record in which order. For example, would we expect to find tools in the archaeological record before evidence of encephalization? In other words, tools giving access to better quality food resources, therefore allowing for larger brain development. Or alternatively, would we expect to find the opposite case, encephalization, that higher cognitive capabilities, preceding the development of stone tools. In other words, allowing for the development of stone tools. These are important characteristics, and they might be very closely coupled within the context of the fossil and archaeological record. It might be the two are very intricately related, which could be a separate third hypothesis and set of predictions, one where we'd expect to see them occurring concurrently within the fossil record. So it's important to think about how these characteristics are related to one another. How does the encephalized brain in the genus Homo reflect or relate to the improved dietary quality? Which one allows for the other, or are the two intimately linked and locked with one another in terms of their evolutionary relationship. It's an important part of the niche that's occupied by Homo, and therefore an important part of the model associated with why Homo first appears in the fossil record, and therefore provides us with predictions that we might test within the fossil and archaeological records.